buying way too many HO Steam locomotives recently. Somebody should really do something about that. But until they do, let's have a look at my latest acquisition. This is a Bachman Spectrum SY Class 282 Mikado, and it's a locomotive with a very unusual history. Although it looks like an American engine, this model is actually based on a Chinese prototype, specifically the SY Class Mikados built by the Tangshan Locomotive Works. These were produced from the early 1960s to the late 90s, with over 1,800 of them built in total, and a small handful are still in use in China today. They are among the last steam locomotives still working in revenue service anywhere in the world, and Tangshan was the last company in the world manufacturing brand new steam locomotives, with the final example being completed in the year 2000. The SY class was based on the earlier Japanese JF6 class, which in turn was based on a series of engines built by the American Locomotive Company for export to Korea in the 1920s. Although the design picked up many small improvements along the way, it still very much resembles a 1920s American locomotive. There are some details that give it away though, such as the all-weather cab and box pop driving wheels. This particular model, however, is a bit different from the ones you'd see in China. In 1989, an American tourist line, the Valley Railroad in Connecticut, purchased a brand new Mikado from Tangshan and imported it to the US. Around the same time, the Knox and Kane Railroad did the same thing, with both locomotives ending up on the Valley Railroad after the Knox and Kane shut down. In 1991, the New York, Susquehanna and Western Railroad also tried to import a locomotive, but unfortunately, the ship carrying their engine sank in the Indian Ocean. Instead, they ended up buying one of the two engines from the Valley Railroad, which became the somewhat famous Susquehanna No. 142. And that's the engine that this model is actually based on. Now obviously it wouldn't make financial sense for Bachman to tool up an entire model just for a small handful of American buyers, so what they actually did was take their standard Chinese model of the SY class and change some minor details to make it look like Susquehanna No. 142 and sell it to the American market. These never sold particularly well in the US and they were only available for a few years, so I was thrilled to find this one since I've always found these to be quite interesting engines. Now, as you might expect for a model built for a completely different market, this engine has some unique quirks and features that I haven't seen on other American Spectrum locomotives. One is the interesting way that the engine connects to the tender. It has this strange interlocking system that seems to be designed to pull the engine and tender as close together as possible on the straight, but allow them to move farther apart so that it can round tighter curves. It's quite clever. I've seen this system on British locomotives as well. Another, somewhat less charming feature is the fact that it's geared extremely fast and the motor doesn't seem to have a whole lot of torque. When I first tested it, it ran very poorly at low speed, and even once it was moving fast, it would slow down dramatically as soon as it hit a curve or any slight imperfection in the track. I'm guessing this is a problem with my particular example because I haven't seen this mentioned in any other reviews of the thing. What I ended up doing to solve it was installing a DCC decoder with a back EMF feature. And what that does is it senses when the motor is slowing down and automatically applies more power to compensate, enabling it to maintain a much smoother speed. This seems to have mostly solved the problem. It's still not my absolute smoothest locomotive, but it can hold a decently slow speed now and it can pull a reasonably long train. So I'm pretty happy with it. Now it's worth noting that this is not exactly a mint condition example of this model. It's from a used collection that BC Shaver and Hobbies acquired, and when I first found it, it was very dusty and wrapped in brown paper. It did not have the original box or any of the documentation. Frankly, I'm amazed the details survived as well as they did. However, I got a good deal on it and I've been nursing it back to health. And the only other major issue is that the rear coupler was broken off. Now the coupler mounting system on this is very different, presumably it's a Chinese standard, so what I did was just take the whole thing off and glue a KD coupler box onto it.
course, the big question, should you buy one of these? Well, it's kind of a mixed bag. For one thing, they are extremely hard to find. I was only able to find one sold eBay listing when I was trying to find out how much this thing is worth. They were sold for a while, they do turn up from time to time, but if you find one, chances are it's going to be the only one for a while. So if you're at all interested, I would jump on it. That said, this is not a perfect model. As I mentioned before, the motor has some torque issues, it's geared very high. I don't know if that's just an issue with mine. I have read that slow speed performance was not the absolute best on these, and I can imagine why. It seems to be geared to run insanely fast. Maybe that's normal in China, maybe it's just a Bachmann quirk, I don't know. American Spectrum engines are geared to run a little bit fast, but not anything like this level. And also, this does not use the same cog belt drive that the American Spectrum locomotives use. It's a much more typical gear drive. It's just geared really fast for some reason. That said, if you put a good decoder in it to fix the low speed issue, it does run extremely quietly, especially if it's lubricated well, so that's nice. As far as I know, nobody else has made a commonly available HO model of the SY class Mikado, so if you're interested in that, the Bachmann one is pretty much the only game in town, and it's certainly not a bad model. It's a great looking model, it's really detailed, lots of nice little separately applied parts, and it can be made to run decently well. So if you're interested, and you happen to come across one, certainly pick it up. But be aware that it has its flaws. Here's something cool I forgot to mention in the script for this video. Despite being considerably longer than 9 inches, this locomotive actually fits on my 9 inch turntable. The footboards overhang the edge considerably, but the wheels do actually fit on the turntable deck, and I can actually turn the engine around. There's a little hump right here along the edge that's a necessary part of the turntable's gear drive. Normally it presents a problem, but with this engine, it can actually slide behind the cow catcher. It does scrape a little bit, but not enough to derail the engine. And having turned the engine around, we can now back it into its stall track, which it also just barely fits in. Anyway, that's about it for me today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more model railroading stuff and possibly other stuff, and I will see you next time.